William is the senior software engineer for Taipei European School. So William, oh. thanks for joining us. You dropped something in the chat space a few weeks ago about chat mm. app. So really appreciate you uh, kindly joining us today. Um, mm. Do you want to give a quick overview of what you're going to share today? So um, I will try not to be too deep dive into the technical side. Um, but of course, if you have any questions afterward, uh, I can answer questions, or you can contact me uh, later uh, if you want uh, extracts of what I have done before, or if you need a help, uh, a hand. Um, but um, I will try to present um, three different types of bots that you can create. Um, from the simplest one to the more advanced featured one uh, and uh, show you how they how they work and an example of the setup and um, I hope that will give you an idea of what you can quickly deliver um, <coughs> like the simplest one uh, can be done uh, in 10 minutes uh, and I guess it will also depend on the use case that you have what you want to use the bots for basically uh, there are three uh, three types of uh, bots that I will, I will talk about, um, and uh, I won't talk about uh, um, two different kinds of bots that you can also build uh, using uh, using uh, the cloud console, uh, which is a PubSub uh, so uh, PubSub script, and uh, also using di dialog flow, uh, because that would be way 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 too involved. Uh, so we will start with uh, webhooks and um, app endpoints, and also how to use the, the API directly. So depending on what, what is your flow, uh, you might want to use one or the another. Um, webhooks are really, really, really simple to set up, uh, and they are mostly used to uh, send one-way messages. So you would have uh, an external system uh, posting messages into your your chat space, and those uh, webhooks um, are, are used for simple tasks like that, like simple notifications. Then you have app, app URLs endpoints uh, that are uh, slightly harder to configure, but not too involved. And uh, the the advantage is that they can also be triggered uh through the through google chat itself and then you have a uh, direct api calls uh, which gives you like full control over what is happening um so i, I will start with the webhooks so the principle is that when you use a webhook uh you will create a kind of a fake user in in your chat space um, and um, you can use that fake user to post messages either on a schedule, for example, if you have a cron job um, uh, running on, on a server or um, you have um, uh, an external script, uh, you can post messages uh, on an external schedule and using external triggers as well. So for example, you could have uh, um, messages posted to your chat space when you receive a trigger from uh, form submission or from your SIS, uh, from a uh, SIS event. Now, uh, the initial uh, message is uh, only one way, so you can't trigger it from the user, but you um, it will be triggered uh, from the outside. But if you want, you can include in your message some uh, features that will allow um, a reaction. Um, because what you will be posting is a um, message object. And that message can be very, very simple, so formatted text, or it could be something way more complex like cards and, and stuff like that. Uh, so with uh, links, with uh, interactive parts. Um, and the, the configuration is done entirely in Google Chat, so you don't need to access the Cloud Console, and you don't need to learn anything about API, which is, uh, which makes it really, really easy to set up. So um, basically, this is how it looks like when you open the configuration for your chat space. Uh, the last um, entry is for apps and integrations. And then you have the webhook, so the second part of the, the list, and you can add a webhook. Uh, you just need to type a name and choose um, uh, an avatar. 
And then uh, from there, uh, it will create a, a link that then you can uh, use as a, um, a URL to post your message. And the message that will be posted there will appear on the, on the chat space. Uh, so this is a very, very, very simple implementation of what it could look like um, in PHP. Uh, so this is a script that you could run on on, on server side, and uh, it will just uh, run a curl uh, request. So you could also do it uh, actually as real curl request in command line, um, and it will post uh, to that uh, URL um, an object uh, that in this case just has a, a text field and. Uh, it, it just says uh, hi and then gives the server time. Uh, and that's all. So I can show you how it looks like because I have my uh, up. Can you see uh, both sides? Yep, we can see that, uh, William. Cool. So if I call that link, it will actually execute the PHP script. But remember, that's just for the sake of this presentation. Uh, in reality, you would have uh, something running on the server side, calling the script on the trigger. Uh, so when I call it, ta -da. Uh, so actually, the, the, the time it took was mostly because of Google, in fact. Um, and uh, oh, I just received it on my phone, too. Um, so it shows the local time of the server and with the message, and uh, it, respect, it respects the formatting. Uh, so this is the easiest bot, but also the most useful uh, in most of the cases, because all you want to do in most cases is just notify the users of something that happened. Um, now, if you want something a little more complex, you can uh, build a an app URL endpoint that will be triggered directly by Google. So the idea is that under certain circumstances, you can trigger the, the bot, which lives in the space or as an independent user. Um, and, uh, and then you can make the bot react to uh, different commands or uh, what is happening, uh, what, what was written in the, in the trigger that the user um, uh, created. Um, so my bot is Al. That's a, that's a natural bot that uh, I use uh, at school. And um, you can um, talk with, uh, with the bot in the space because I added the bot. So if you look at uh, space settings, an integration, it was added and you can add it uh, using this button. Uh, but you can also talk to the bot directly, uh, either by mention, but I won't show it here because if I was uh, typing at uh, it would start showing some students' uh, emails. So uh, I will show you a direct message. So the bot is supposed to just repeat whatever I write to it. So hello. And that's it. And uh, if I am in the space, I could also uh, say at Al and then say hello, and then it would uh, receive the message and reply. Uh, now, the configuration is slightly more difficult, uh, but it's still OK. Um, you have to uh, go to the Google Cloud Console. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming that most people uh, would have used that uh, for maybe some other things. but. Um, among the many different things that you can do when you create a project uh, in your Cloud Console, uh, you can select the APIs that uh, your project will be using. Uh, so here you can add the Google Chat uh, API. And uh, then in the configuration, 
Uh, later, I, I can share with the, the slides uh, if it's written too small. Uh, but the configuration is very, very simple. So basically, one project where we can have uh, one uh, bot. And um, you give it a name, you give it a picture, a description. Uh, then uh, usually I select uh, both of them because I want it to react to both DMs and uh, space messages. Um, I choose app URL. You could also uh, select app script project, which is also really cool, but I won't be talking about it uh, at, the, uh, at this time. But the same way as you create a, a small script that reacts to Google um, uh, pings, you can also create a um, um, app script project that does exactly the same thing. Um, and uh, here is the URL of the endpoint that is being called. Now, you can also add some slash comments, um, which is kind of reminiscent of IRC, you know, when you had special comments that you could send to the server. Uh, so here, there's a special one that I set up, uh, which is slash NO, and uh, you give it an ID. And um, in my case, I limited the use of the bot to specific users. So there's myself, and there's there's my uh, there's Gerard, my my uh, test user, and then a couple of other uh, people from IT who can use it. Uh, and the program that uh, just ran when I I talked to the bot uh, is exactly uh, this one. Uh, so. Again, simple implementation in PHP, but um, you can do way more complex things. Um, and uh, the part that was triggered is this little piece that says, well, if um, that's not a slash command, then I will just repeat whatever was received in the object that I received from Google. So Google sends the message uh, object, which is a really complete object with a lot, a lot of data. Um, and I'm just picking the text, and I am prefixing with it with uh, a small sentence, which is what you, you saw before. Um, now, I will test the slash command. So you, you see the, the result. If I use the slash command instead, so see, uh, Google will auto fear and um, hello, simple hello. This is also written in the configuration, if I just say this. So first, this is only seen by myself, uh, by, by me, um, not by other users of the space. So the other users of the space will only see the bot replying. And um, so I'm really Girard. Uh, and uh, that's it. That's the, the exact uh, 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 reaction uh, expected. So hello. Then it takes uh, within the sender object the display name and then adds a nice to meet you, some smiley, which are all automatically changed. Um, now, this is cool because you can trigger it directly. Uh, but the problem with that uh, type of bot is that it doesn't have um, access to anything else other than the slash command or the message that you put in the direct message to the bot or in the message after the mention, the at mention. If you want to have a full-fledged uh, full, full uh, experience as a bot uh, and uh, have access to uh, all the data from the space and even other spaces where, where the bot is um, added, um, you have to use the API. Uh, now, it's way more complicated, but it's also way more powerful. Um, so the last version uh, was good because the bot is an actual person. You can t send dark messages to the bot. Um, in the case of a chat API, it's a little the same. Um, you will use that bot, but uh, you will be able to trigger API calls under his name even without any trigger from the user or from Google. Uh, so you can uh, send messages just like uh, you, you saw before, uh, but you can also retrieve information, uh, including the whole message history and uh, uh, analyze what is going on in the chat space. Um, now, the drawback is that you have to self-manage the two-way messaging. Uh, you won't receive any trigger. Um, and um, 
the, the API reference is your Bible uh, if you want to do that. So you have to uh, study uh, the, the API, the API uh, endpoints. But with that, you can do some really crazy things. Um, so first about the configuration. So in the screen that I showed you a little earlier where you were uh, setting up uh, your API bot, uh, you can click on credentials. And uh, that's another tab on the same screen. And uh, in the credentials, uh, you will see a service account. Uh, so I use the default one. I have others that are used for different purposes. But uh, the first one is the one I, I use. And um, then uh, what will happen is that you will uh, log in as, your, you will authenticate as the service account and then uh, uh, post uh, commands uh, to Google Chat API. And those comments will be executed as the bot. So this is an example of um, a, a, a bot. Um, so I will show you what it does exactly. Um, this is uh, the, uh, for, um, this is a function. Basically, if you, if you have any question about how it's working in details, I will explain to you in more details, but you authenticate and then you uh, get a, um, uh, a client for Google Chat and then you start uh, calling the API endpoints and then you process the data the way you want. Now, uh, let's uh, show what it does. So now when I click this link, it will execute the program that I should just showed. So without any interaction from me, it will start posting messages to the space uh, bot test area. And you will see wh uh, what happens. So it's, it says, um, I'm uh, in eight spaces. It, it was added in eight spaces. And uh, uh, this space, uh, the one that is being called, is uh, this and two members, uh, myself, and also my test uh, user, which I'm using now. And then this. And you can do some really, really cool things like, uh, like this. And if you look at it on your mobile app, you will see also the smiles changes, uh, ch changing and, and everything. Um, if I say hello, uh, it will reply. But you see, this is also being uh, processed by the, the, the bot. It's still processing messages in parallel to replying to my slash command. So this is the most involved. And I would say uh, in every day's um, scenario uh, of implementation, you, the best of all worlds would be uh, to use uh, the two last ones. Um, you implement an app uh, using an app endpoint that you control. And that way, you can get triggered by Google. But also, for very specific um, uh, features that you need, you can uh, implement some pure API calls to, to add functionalities. And that's it.